Hey, it's Victor Lucas from the Electric Playground, and I'm with D. Bradley Baker, who is the voice of the Bad Batch. He's all of them. D, how are you doing? We're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on this third season. I'm having such a wonderful time with the show. Thank you. Uh, can you can you describe what happens in the third season without spoiling too much? What are we focusing on here in the third season? Well, with uh, season three of The Bad Batch, we're bringing the whole story home. We're going to resolve everything and bring it all in for a landing. Um, and it's spectacular. It's heartfelt. Uh, maybe there's some heartbreak there. I don't know. Maybe there is. Maybe there's not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna spoil anything. <laughs> but um, the Bad Batch is broken up right now. Um, Omega and Crosshair are isolated and imprisoned. And it's the question of how to get them saved, or can they get them saved? Because uh, the Emperor Palpatine is interested in this, um, in their imprisonment for some reason, which we may find out. And uh, so there's a lot at play, it, it personally, but also in the in the larger stakes of the Star Wars um, mythology that's playing out in terms of the uh, the Emperor Palpatine uh, slowly uh, consolidating his grasp on power. Yeah, it's a, a wonderful sort of connect the dots kind of story that's unfolding. I'm halfway through, and I can't wait for the rest. Thank you for not spoiling too much there. Oh, What's it never. like for you? <laughs> What's it like for you to watch this show with your friends and your family? Because you're you're all of these characters and the clones as well. I I I I, I, I I'm not even sure how to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> to watch this show where it's it much of it is just me talking to myself. <laughs> I know. But as as I perform it, it just feels like these are different people, and so it doesn't feel that odd to me. But when I watch it, it's like wow, that's really. That's quite a that's quite a magic trick you got going there, um, <laughs> but the but the but the best part of it is is that it's it, look I don't I don't want anyone to think about me when they watch this show, even of friends or family. I want yeah. these characters to live as themselves. Yes. and that's and 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 that's what's so fun is is that the show is so beautifully written, and it's such a it's such a compelling personal story in addition to the larger uh, political action that's playing out. It's a yeah. great political story that I think anybody would connect into and to see it play out in this fully realized cinematic way that is just like you look at it and say is this I don't think this is a cartoon this is like this is beautiful this is real this is full I mean it's, yeah it it's, has it has real weight and real resonance doesn't it like and and what's amazing for me is, is that it's a more focused show than some of the animated stuff has been or some of star wars has been star wars has been so yeah. big and this is about oh, these yeah. this tight new group yeah there's i mean there's episodes like in season two with crosshair that's just it's just very personal there's like one yeah. character maybe two characters and it's just this journey and um and so there there's a great confidence of storytelling that you see from that where they will take time they'll take silence they'll 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 let a story unfold without forcing it or that yep. or it's not all non-stop action but but it's a balance of all of these elements of what's of what's good star wars and good storytelling do you have a favorite character to voice now in in the third season because i, I you know like us as viewers i'm sure your journey has been ever changing through this. My favorite is Crosshair right now. Yeah. I find that he has the most interesting trajectory. I um I I I, I really yeah, I, I, I really find Crosshair is a fascinating character because yep. he, he's sort of the focal point of 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 despair, of selfishness and also of hope and redemption. This is this is the core of why this story is a really compelling human story that's playing out with with Omega and the rest of the batch. I mean, they're all they're all tied together in all of this. Well, I love the show, D. I've got your Thanks. the figures all back there by the way, <laughs> the whole bad batch. And uh, you know, thank you and congratulations and and I hope I get to speak to you soon about uh, wherever these guys go. I hope so. It's uh, it's 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 fantastic, and I'm very very excited for everyone, fans, and everyone else to see the final conclusion. Yeah. Of that batch. <laughs> Thank you. All the best. May the force be with Take you. Take care. 
Hey, it's Victor Lucas from the Electric Playground. I'm with Jennifer Corbett and Brad Rao, two of the shepherds, head shepherds of the Bad Batch. Uh, c- congratulations on this new season. I haven't seen the whole thing, obviously, but I'm loving what I've been watching so far. Jennifer, why don't we start with you? How would you describe the events of season three? Or picking off uh, where we left off in season two, where the team is fractured and uh, Omega's confined on Mount Tantus with Crosshair and Hunter and Wrecker are doing what they can to try to find and, and rescue them. So season three is a lot of uh, a lot of action, a lot of uh, suspense, uh, a lot of emotion and wow. also a lot of uh, classic Star Wars adventures and uh, and family and hope and all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot of hope for the Bad Batch and and the clones? I mean, that's one of the things that I've noticed is just how tragic this tale is. Brad, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, some of the heaviness of of this series? I don't mean to be a downer, but we go to some dark places with this show. We do. And this is our darkest season yet, for sure. I mean, one thing we like to say is that when things get the darkest, the smallest bit of hope can shine the brightest and that Ooh. sometimes that would be our you know our divining rod through through an episode because yeah we we want the tension to be extreme if, if it's going to be scary we want it to be as scary as possible but we don't do that just to you know get someone to give a reaction we're trying to put our important characters up against these crazy odds so that if we're yeah. doing our job right you're not sure how they're going to get out of it or how they're going to resolve things and you know there's always hope at the end of the day yeah there's always been allegory with the star wars myth as well there's always been a a connection to events that are you know a part of like our regular history and jennifer was there something tied into the mythology into the storytelling of uh the bad batch season three that echoes things that exist in our real world well i always come at it from like a parent perspective of uh Hunter look, trying to find his kid and and uh, and willing to and what you do to protect your family, I guess right. is actually that. And it, there's a lot of stuff in season two that we were teeing up, but again, the loss of tech that they're dealing with throughout season three, I think, is something people relate to because everybody experiences loss in a different way. It's part yeah. of part of the human condition, human process, um, and how each character deals with that differently. And um, you know, again, what Brad was saying, it's it's a family unit, it's a it's a family dynamic. But this is a dark time in the world, and they have to count on each other and lean on each other because that's really how you're going to get through some of these situations. And something you know, I think I I relate to. So, I, you know, obviously, I haven't seen how you conclude everything, but I'm I'm looking ahead because we're all privy to what happens in Star Wars. And we don't see the Bad Batch in the future of Star Wars. So it feels like a closure a little bit to the the fiction, the storytelling that kicked off with the Clone Wars and, and the prequel series. Is, is that kind of how you're framing this, Brad? Well, I mean, it's a big galaxy out there, so so you can't yeah. you, you can't always you can't always uh, let that be the guide. But I will say, as we went into this third season before we even started writing it we knew it was going to be our final season and it was this rare opportunity to be able to conclude the story the way we wanted to to mm. conclude it the way that the characters were were driving it hopefully in a satisfying way it feels to me looking back on this season with our whole cast and crew it's our best it's one of the best seasons of anything we've ever made certainly it's my favorite season of the bad batch and i i think the fans are gonna like it that's awesome. How much has production changed on this series? If you go back to the sort of early days of the Clone Wars, how different is it to make an, a season of the Bad Batch as opposed to, you know, how Star Wars animation kind of really kicked off for us? I've known Dave Filoni for a long time, but I I didn't start working with him on Star Wars until Rebels. But knowing those how those early days of the Clone Wars um, went, the beauty of it is that a lot of the production is the same, actually. Technology mm. improves, you know, people come and go. A lot of the same team members, vibrant members of our team in Lucasfilm Animation are still there as supervisors and pushing, you know, pushing these ideas forward. And we always have Dave, as busy as he is, he's always, you know, there to guide us and push us in the right direction. Sometimes some tough love, 
Oh, gay. It's tough love. But we love it. We're <laughs> always trying to to carve out the best stories we can. All that being said, the it's pretty similar the way that everything is set up. It's just, mm. you know, we're we're always improving and trying to push ourselves as we go. The tools get better, but the craftsmanship is the same. That's a pretty good way to say it. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, Jennifer, what's it like to, you know, write with the, the constraints like this and to conceive and to put stories together knowing there's kind of brackets around all of it? Is it is it liberating or is it constraining? What's what's it like for you? Well, we're lucky enough that where we are in the timeline, we have a lot of room to, to play around. And I never really feel like we were told don't don't do this it's more of uh if we brought something up we'll be like well let's look let's look into that and let's explore it um because the, the story group keeps us honest on you know the, the grander star wars lore but again every story that we tell we try to and it sounds strange but we try to take the star wars out of it and mm. Say what what are we trying to say? What are we trying to do? And then we sprinkle in kind of like the Star Wars into it. So it's more about, again, the personal story and our characters and this this family unit and the experiences and challenges that they go through. Yeah, this is a very different show and in, in much the same way that Andor, I think, is a very different show from a lot of what we recognize around Star Wars. Brad, what what do you say to those fence sitters because uh, you've been around the, the mythology now for a long time and we've been watching it for a long time. I love this show. And and one of my favorite things about it is that it, it feels Star, Star Wars, but not like overtly Star Wars. It also feels very personal and focused, which I relish. I think it's just wonderful. But what do you say to get people to to take the, the leap and jump into into the bad batch yeah i mean i'm always telling people check to check it out the interesting thing um a lot i think a lot of people that are sitting on the fence like you're suggesting feel like well i haven't watched all the seasons of the clone wars and i haven't watched the rebels but um stealing a, an awesome line from jen from something way back when you don't you don't have to watch all that to enjoy Bad Batch because Omega, she never watched the Clone Wars. She didn't know what's going on. And she's this right. great point of view, stealing from Jen, sorry, Jen. She's this great point of view into the Star Wars universe. And, uh, you know, we've had people tell both of us and we've talked to, you know, our cast, a lot of people have said the same thing to our crew members that their kids didn't watch anything and they started watching Bad Batch and they love it. And then they've gone back and explored some of the other shows. So it's a it's really a great series to to get started on. I agree. Absolutely. Thank you both. Uh, I'm sad to see this show wrap up, but I can't wait to see how you guys do it. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks.